Hello, I'm Tony Silvera, your host, and today we're going to continue our deliverance training. I will answer the question that many people do. Can a Christian be possessed? Or can a Christian have demons? This is a question with multiple answers, and I'm going to give you mine. I know this is a theological problem, but putting theology aside, I like to teach you deliverance and how to set people free from the demonic and also to free yourself. Let's start by saying that theology says no, a Christian cannot have demons, but practicality, real life, says yes. At Bible school we learned that a Christian cannot have demons. But when I started serving God in a local church, I began to observe the influence of the demonic in many Christians. I realized that theology ignores sometimes reality and it's inaccurate. And I saw many people influenced by demons in local churches. Now notice I'm not talking about demonic possession, though it may occur. But what we can observe is that yes, Christians can open doors to the demonic and live under the influence of the demonic. When a person comes to Christ, the Holy Spirit will help the person to be free from demonic influences. However, there are many Christians that open doors to the devil. In certain realms, it's a heresy to even consider that a Christian can have demons. But yes, uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, Christians cannot comprehend, they think that's a heresy, but they can have demons influencing uh, them in their soul and in their spirit. Uh, let's read the scripture in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 33. It says, They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How is that you say you shall be made free? Notice the Pharisees arguing with Jesus, saying, Theologically, you cannot say that we are in bondage because we are free, we are Abraham's seed. In verse 36, Jesus told them, If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So denial is an important aspect of demonic possession and of demonic oppression. So yes, a Christian can have demons. And if you're a Christian and you've been under the influence or attack of the demonic, I have good news for you. You can be set free from that influence because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. There are a few symptoms of demonic activity in Christians and we can acknowledge them by observation. There is a good test uh, that the born Christian can use to determine it that if there is a possibility of having demons attached to their life. Observe these symptoms. If you're struggling with things like anger, lust, pornography, fears, rage, depression, hurts, unforgiveness, grief, guilt, bitterness, hate, hatred, nightmares, and symptoms alike, most likely you are under demonic oppression. And oppression, it's the middle level of demonic attacks. It starts by influence, then oppression, and finally possession. Now, there are symptoms that uh, you probably uh, are saying, like I've prayed to God for deliverance and victory, other people prayed for me, I go to church, and I'm accountable to the pastor, yet the problems are never ending. And I've heard this over and over. And this is a clear symptom of a demonic attack. If you have done all that and have tried to crucify the flesh daily, the root may be demonic. And you will go to someone who can deal with this activity to determine you need someone with the gift of discernment of spirits. So look for a deliverance worker, look for a ministry, a church, uh, uh, just like ours here, the Passion Center, where you have people that will help you in your struggles to be completely set free from that influence, from that oppression, or even from possession. 
you have uh, very little to lose if it's not demonic. If it's demonic, you must first get rid of all your pride, doubt, disbelief about Christians not having problems with demons, and just be humble and ask for deliverance. It's like when you wash yourself. Uh, when I wash, I'm not necessarily dirty, but I do it as a routine. So if I wash my hands, I can wash them once, twice, three times, uh, now that we're living uh, in a society uh, where masks and washing of hands are required, we do it so often. And so sometimes we don't observe any dirt, but we still wash uh, our hands. Do the same in what regards to deliverance. Just simply say to yourself that you don't know uh, if there are demon spirits within you or influencing you, but if there are, you want them out. No one can deliver you. If you do not believe, they can be there. So all we want a person to do is to say, I don't know if there are any demons in me, but if there are, I want them out. I want to be free. So God, please come wash me with the blood of Jesus and I bind, I rebuke, I bring to no effect any demonic activity, influence, oppression over my life, over my family. Do this prayer regularly. To get demons out, all of the legal right that keeps them there must be broken, including dealing with unforgiveness from the heart, not the, the head. Generational curses must also be broken. The occult, witchcraft, we, we need to deal with those if they're present. If the person renounces any practice of sin, any lust, any demonic activities, then we're breaking the legal right of demons to operate. One of the things that I've observed in Christians that are under demonic oppression is familiar spirits, generational problems. One way to examine yourself also for demonic oppression is to do exactly what doctors do. If you go to a, a doctor and uh, you uh, have symptoms of early diabetes, for instance, they will ask, do you have diabetes in your family? Do you have heart disease in your family? So they ask you this not to diagnose you, but in order to try to see if there's a hereditary condition that may pass from father to son, from mother to daughter, generational infirmities. So if you compare oppression that your grandparents, your parents, uncles, people from your family observed, you know that they've never got victory in those areas, then you can address those issues. You will discover that you're basically struggling with the same kind of problems, with the same family of problems, what the Bible calls a familiar spirit. We see lines of poverty that go from father to son. In some oriental cultures, they even catalog castes or systems of society where when you, were you born, under a certain family, you have to be poor all of your life. But I have good news for you. In Christ, you can break that curse and live in freedom and reach your full potential. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 talks about the curse of the law. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. The curse of the law came upon families, but it says that Jesus became a curse to break the curse. The curse of the law did not go away after Jesus came. We need to deal with God's way by repenting from sins and iniquities of our fathers. And I like to do it just a few generations back. We know that there's a pattern that if it's repeated, for two or three generations or four generations, it becomes installed in a nation, in a family. It becomes the rule, the norm. So it's very important that we also understand this and that we break any curses and we break even the curse of the law because we don't need to live under that curse. Just breaking those curses, however, may not be enough, may not be sufficient. That's why in Mark 16, which is one of my favorite passages in the Bible, uh, Jesus said to them, 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be damned. So you see, salvation and damnation are a choice after you receive the gospel. And then he goes on on verse 17 saying the following, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. In Jesus' name we have the power, we have the authority to cast out demons. So even if the curse is broken, because now the person came to Christ, now they are saved, we may have still to cast out those demons out of their lives so that the curse will be definitely broken. There's a theological problem also that says that there's no scripture that expressly says that a Christian can have demons, nor there is a scripture that expressly declares that a Christian cannot have demons. So uh, either it's by reference or omission. I'm not here to argue theology. I'm here to let you know that it's very important for any Christian, for any person to go through deliverance, through a deliverance process, a process of cleansing, because we are called to resist the devil. And how can I resist the devil? Again, one of my favorite passages in Scripture is in James chapter 4, where we have a rule for deliverance that says, be subject to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Recognize that you're sinners and get your soil hands clean. Realize that you've been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interests and purify your hearts. Purify them of your spiritual adultery. Notice again the beginning of this passage. Submit, yield yourselves to God, then resist the devil, and as a consequence, he will flee from you. This is a, a scripture of great importance. And the greatest lie of the enemy to any Christian is to say that he doesn't exist or that he doesn't have power or that he cannot oppress you or that he cannot curse you. Some people want to say that because they think that as a Christian, they're a child of God and the demons cannot attack them. Well, I have news for you. You can be attacked by the enemy. And scripture says that the, the enemy of your soul roars like a lion coming around, trying to seek and see who can he devour, devour. So consider the following. There's a war going on, but most Christians are not aware of the enemy because they cannot physically see the enemy. That's right. Satan operates in the spiritual realm, which is an invisible realm. So it's not often that you will see Satan materialized in our world. That's also possible. However, Satan op operates in an invisible way. The Apostle Paul knew about this war with Satan and demons, and he challenged us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, to fight a good fight in order to fight a battle, we need an armor and we need weapons, and we've learned about this. So be aware of the fight. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, I'll read on the Amplified Bible, it says, Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of ours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. So be aware of this uh, fight. Also verse 8, it says, be aware, withstand, be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christ, of Christ, Christians throughout the world. Now this said, let me also mention that not every problem that you have is demonic. We cannot blame the lusts of the flesh on the works of the devil. So if a person 
has constant lust and then blames it on the devil, that's just an excuse. Of course, that lust will open the door to the demonic, but it's a work of the flesh. This is not to say, so, that every problem in the list that I mentioned is a demonic activity. But if the person has tried to crucify the flesh daily and done all they can to get victory, then it's time to find roots of demonic activity and be set free in the name of Jesus. Just believe it. So don't ignore this fact that as a Christian, you can be attacked by the enemy and if you open doors to the enemy, he will come in. Jesus, in fact, mentioned that if you don't clean your house, which is your life, Demonic activity can become seven times worse. It's going to be worse than your initial state before you came to Jesus. So make sure you live in holiness. Clean your life. Cleanse your hands from all things that are related to sin. And just seek God for protection. Next week, I'm going to teach you a few prayers of deliverance. What are these prayers? Examples of casting out demons and asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit, cover you under the precious blood of Jesus, and how to pronounce the name of Jesus to attack the forces of darkness. See you here next week. God bless you.